Yep, it's going. Hey guys, um, it's Taylor again. I posted my first vlog, writing vlog yesterday, and I have over 40 views, not just on YouTube, but through my blog. I posted it on Twitter, so I got some feedback from there, and I have a comment on YouTube. Woo! Uh, so, from what I've heard, they liked it. So, you who are viewing it right now might not like it, but, oh well. <laughs> Um, so anyways, without further ado, today I'm going to be sharing something from this book called You Are My Hiding Place. I got it from a, a very dear friend. I love you, Allie. You are my friend. Um, <laughs> anyways, it's it's a 40-day journey in the company of Amy Carmichael, who is um, a Christian missionary. She not only did amazing works for God, but she's a really good writer, I think. She just wrote about things that she saw that inspired her and brought her closer to God and and that is really special to me so there's a page in here that I love and want to share it's longer than my poem yesterday but oh well <laughs> so it's called to become his flames of fire a veil covers the hearts of the unbelieving but whenever anyone turns to the Lord the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And she starts that out, and that's from 2 Corinthians 3:15 through 18. And she says, The golden lights of dawn brought me a new thought recently. I was out walking early in the forest, and it was one of those dawns that bathed the world in brightness. The air looked pure gold, as if it were transparent glass. To the south of me was a whole forest of golden trees. Leaves were flakes of gold. On one tree, the fruits that hung there were golden balls. And here was the strange part. To the east, there was as yet nothing of the sun itself only the rising loveliness of his golden dawning, but all the beauty and gladness of spirit that came from his flaming fire. He makes flames of fire his servants, from Psalms 104.4. I had often thought of the force of that word, the burning energy, the purging purity of flaming fire, but not of this gentler ministry, this bathing in brightness all that he touches. The first part of that verse is this. He makes winds his messengers. An old Jewish legend says that God's angels are as the winds, going and coming and ceasing to be when their service is accomplished. They are selfless servants who ever saw a wind. They are obedient to cause either calm or storm, fulfilling his word, and they are free. Free as the wind, we say. Isn't this a perfect picture of what you and I want to be? Selfless, obedient, free because we are obedient, cleansing and brightness all whom we touch. Only love can be that and do that. Lord, forevermore, give us this kind of love. And she ends with a prayer. My Father, today, transform one irritable or angry thought to a thought and a word of love. Transform one hoarded moment to a moment or an hour of patient compassion. Transform me, Father, by the little glories of this day. So I liked this because not only did she look at something that we might see a lot, a beautiful sunrise, a morning where the sunlight really does make everything seem golden she didn't just take the time to appreciate such beauty but she looked deeper than that she looked at where 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 does God come in in that how can she apply that to her life and and not only does she apply it to her life but it's shared in this book that touches people like me and hopefully you to to be selfless to be obedient and to be free as the wind when we are obedient to God and I think that's really cool because I think sometimes people think of freedom 
as being exempt from the rules, from not having to follow anybody, to, to be your own self, but really that's bondage. When you don't have God in your life to, to give you direction and guidance, so you don't destroy yourself, that's bondage, that's not freedom. And being truly free is when you accept who you're supposed to be, who God created you to be, and you're obedient to His his way and his will in your life and that's when you can be free to be everything that he created you to be and that's really awesome I think and not only did she get the point across quite well but it was really poetic and I could see it and it was beautiful and but yeah so I just thought I'd give you the reasons why I liked that little insert in her book um so that is it for today please I would love for your feedback I really would I even if it's mean <laughs> even if it's the best thing I've heard all day um I really like I like feedback so I hope you all have a great day and I hope that this piece from her book has inspired you and hopefully you guys are looking forward to more so I will see you gonna turn this off on the first later